In this video, we've got another tactic for you to try out. It's a classic 4-2-3-1, but a bit asymmetric. We've got a defensive midfielder going with a central midfielder. And we are going to test this with Girona, Union Berlin, Wolves and Arsenal. As you can see, obviously, we've got a goalkeeper on sweeper support who's got no additional instructions. We've got a fullback on support in the right back spot who's got tackle harder and shoot less often. Both the centre backs have got our ball playing defenders, shoot less often and tackle harder. Our left back is a wing back on attack who's got pass it shorter, cross, aim far post shoot less often and tackle harder. Our defensive midfielder is on the right side and he's a deep line playmaker and a support with tackle harder on. Left sided centre mid is a central midfielder on attack with shoot less often and tackle harder. Right winger is an inverted winger on attack, shoot less often, tackle harder. Shadow striker in attack at the cam, shoot, uh, shoot less often and tackle harder. Same for the left winger who's an inverted winger on attack and we've got the advanced forward up top who takes fewer risks, dribbles more, shoots less often, marks tighter and tackles harder. And the instructions that come with this uh, tactic, the mentality is attacking, shorter passing, pass into space, play out of the defence, low crossing, higher tempo. On the in transition we counter press and counter, we distribute to centre backs and full backs and take short kicks and then it's a high hour with a high press, get stuck in step up more often prevent short goalkeeper distribution and uh, trigger the press much more often. So that is the tactic explained. We are gonna simulate the season and let's see how these four teams get on. So we've simulated the season for the test. Arsenal will win the Premier League, which is a very good start for the tactic. As we can see as well, Wolves have finished seventh, gaining a Europa League spot. Uh, Arsenal scored 103 goals, conceded 40, 63 goal difference and 88 points. Very good, very good end of season form. Wolves have got 81 goals, which is the second most in the league, beating Man City as well. And conceded 63 though, uh, defence is probably a little, a little bit weaker. Uh, got 18 goal difference, 64 points, not too far off the top five nine points other games could have swung their way obviously 10 losses now looking at the stats as well the Sack had a great season in the premier league 17 goals 17 assists second on the average rating as well with eight player of the matches declan rice who i was gonna assume played that central midfielder on attack got 16 goals odegaard with 11 uh assists as well now looking at the squad saka got 25 and 20 overall Martinelli on the other side got 15 and 20 so the wingers are very influential in this uh, formation Emil Smith Rowe seemed to have played a lot of games as well Declan Rice up there as well 17 goals and 8 assists very very good looking at Wolves they had a lot of goals throughout the squad as well uh, four players on double digits one of them is actually on loan so three players on double digits being winger not 100 percent sure where couldn't you played and our central def uh, central midfielder as well getting a lot of goals now going over to germany with union berlin as well they finished fifth which is very good good goal difference compared to the rest of the teams below them obviously top four but we're gonna be a little bit better uh, they got 62 goals which is the third highest amount in the league uh conceding 47 though 15 goal difference a lot less actual goal uh, high goal scorers in this team but Bedia who only played 21 as well started 21 games and then uh, played eight off the bench got 12 goals Bertusson as well got 13 assists which is very good Aronson got uh, 15 goals and eight assists I assume he probably played the either shadow striker or the central midfielder in the Champions League they were probably quite unfortunate not to get into the Europa League had a tough draw uh, Arsenal did very good in the Champions League group stage though, beating Bayern Munich twice. As you can see there, it was won by Man City in the final. Arsenal only actually got to the round of 16, losing out to AC Milan, which is quite a poor, poor going, I think. And uh, Union Berlin were knocked out of the DFP Polkow very early as well in the second round. Arsenal made it to the FA Cup quarter final and got knocked out by Luton in the third round of the Carabao Cup. Wolves looking very similar as well, lost very early in the Carabao Cup to Rotherham and uh, 
got knocked out by Newcastle in the FA Cup as well, so they beat both our Prem teams. Lastly, we've got Girona. Uh, they were the disappointment of the lot, but I think that can be explained with a lot of the players didn't actually complete a full season. I see they've not got a vast amount of people who played a lot of games. Dobrik did the business, 30, goal, uh, 30 games and 17 goals. In the Copa del Rey as well, they got knocked out by Real Sociedad. Not the best team to get that early on. So we're actually going to look at the game between the two sides in the Premier League, which ended 5-2, so lots of goals to look at. So obviously, there probably is quite an emphasis on the wingers, as we've seen before. Uh, Martinelli had a good chance. Saka has pulled it in. Obviously, as, as well as you can see, we are leaving just the two centre backs mainly at the back. Rice here picking it up, going on to the wing again. Martinelli scoring a nice goal. Corners are always going to be scored. It's actually, two corners in this game. And again, it started on the wing. Winger to winger. Left wing back on attack. And it's foul to the shadow striker who's got an open goal. And now the two goals for Wolves. Again, our fullbacks working. Winger very much involved. Plays it into the striker. Striker finishes it. Again, Winger's involved. Shadow striker. Where is it away? Pretty much every goal in this game, except from the corners, one of the Wingers was involved. Now in this game again, uh, with Arsenal, they beat Everton 6-0. Winger involved, central midfielder getting in uh, involved as well. So there's quite a lot of overload on that left side with the left wing back, left winger, and the central midfielder on attack. Obviously, as you see here, Declan Rice is very high. One of the highest players on the pitch, and he's ready for the cutback. But it's gone to Trossard, who's probably playing shadow striker. So there's loads of options in the box for the winger. Again, it's played, it's down the wing. Zinchenko now. With that overload, you can see these players here. Managed to make its way through to Smith Rowe and he's put it into the open goal. Again, it's going out to the winger. Saka drives to the byline, gets it across. Declan Rice is there in loads of space. That's what that central attacking, uh, central midfielder attack role is going to do. Is going to leave that player in a lot of space. And Rice again scoring on the edge of the box. Union Berlin had some really good results as well. Lots of games where they scored quite a few goals. Ended on a 4-1 win. 3-1 win. Uh, even got a 4-0 win against Frankfurt, who were a very, very decent team. But let's have a look at the 4-1 win at home against Freiburg. So I'm going to assume he's playing, that, he's playing the winger role. And again, you've got this overload that you've got three players on one defender, realistically. And one of them's managed to pull it away. Again, it's going to go down the wing. Guzens is playing our wing back attack. Manages to get it to the edge of the box. Falls for the shadow striker. And he puts it into the back of the net. And then the final goal of the game as well. Down the wing again, played into the middle. Aronson plays it to the winger goal So you can see it's obviously very similar patterns of play even with uh, Union Berlin we've got Aronson who is the shadow striker getting a goal very involved in the, uh, the other goals as well and Both of our wingers Getting very involved as well. So even we're going to check out Girona here who obviously did a little bit worse uh, they win 4-1 away to uh, Mallorca. So here it is on the wing again. Obviously, notice the same patterns of play throughout the whole thing. Dovbrick, I think that was, slotted in at the near post. So another goal started on the wing. Shadow Strikers played into the middle from the wing. Uh, obviously, Shadow Striker, left back, left winger, all involved. Now central mid on attack has played it to the left winger. Left winger is going to cross it in. Obviously Dobrik is very good for these sort of crosses. He's a tall target man. He's going to bury him every chance he gets. So yeah, that was the tactic. It's definitely one you should use if you want a lot of goals. Obviously some very nice play down the wing. Getting your wingers very involved as well. I think the tactic definitely was successful with 
one of our teams winning the league and two overachieving and one maybe finishing around where they should be but they had a lot of injuries now if you like this video make sure to leave it a like and subscribe for more and we'll catch you in the next one